Monday, bloody Monday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of John Amel's Archives right here on YouTube. Now, I wanted to go over a couple of things today, so bear with me. Um, obviously, we're going to talk about the Eagles game. That's my focal point, as always. I also wanted to talk about the Patriots-Colts game last night, and I wanted to touch on the Jay Cutler-Kyle Orton update of their trade and that whole Broncos Bears thing. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Got absolutely tore up from the floor up on Saturday. Was ready to go for Sunday and boy was I disappointed. But both of my fantasy football teams did win. But So let's cut out and go right to the Philadelphia Eagle game, man. 28-23 heartbreaker. Absolute heartbreaker because the biggest problem with this game is the fact that we almost doubled the San Diego Chargers yardage, which doesn't mean anything. You know, if you can't put the ball in the end zone, you're not, you're not the better football team. And this has been going on for damn near four or five years now. You know, now that I live in Philadelphia, I have the opportunity to listen to, you know, 610, the Philly Eagles radio station. And you know, I, I kind of talk to a lot of people because there's a lot of Eagle fans out there, and I'm realizing it's not just me who's noticing this, man. This is a big, big problem for like a four since since the, our, our our Super Bowl season. The Eagles have basically been trading field goals for touchdowns, which you can never win a game like this. If we did what we had to do yesterday and scored the touchdowns in the opportunities that we should have scored the touchdowns. We win that ball game all day. I mean, you know, clearly we outplayed the San Diego Chargers, even to the very end when Donovan McNabb was driving. But it's like, dude, I don't know what's going on with Andy Reid, man. I don't know if this guy is just, like, super stubborn. He doesn't learn his lesson. It's the same shit every year. And it's about time that the excuses stop because Joe Banner is right. As far as talent goes, this team is is one of the most talented teams in the in the NFL, if not the most talent, talented team uh, record, uh, I'm sorry, um, player-wise, but our, our record never indicates it. Same thing as last year. Yeah, we put together a lucky run, a good you know run because we have good players, and we went to the Super Bowl again, but that's only because we lost five games during the regular season. We backed into the wild card spot, and we lost five games in the regular season by six points or less. All the games, actually, except for one game that we lost last year, we lost by six points or less. And it's the same shit, it's the same shit all over again this year. Andy Reid's got three different fourth and ones, he's kicking field goals. I'm scratching my head, I'm looking at the clock in the third quarter and I'm saying to myself, I know what he's trying to do because I've been on this journey now for as long as he's been here, 10 years, I know what he's trying to do. The fat fuck does not have time to do it. He just doesn't have time to do it. You're down 28 to 9. You can't be kicking field goals when you're down to 28 to 6. I'm sorry. You, there's no more field goals, man. This guy has four different fourth and one fourth and one opportunities. He's kicking field goals on every single one of them. Wow, I mean, it just comes to the point, you know, and it's it's like I don't know how anybody out there can can critique Donovan McNabb. I really I really don't. And it really, you know, one thing that I've prided myself on since I've been an Eagles fan since 1988, since the t I don't watch college football, I'm not knowledgeable as, as far as college college football goes. So when Donovan McNabb got drafted, I didn't boo him because I didn't know any better. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who Ricky Williams was. I welcomed the move with full arms. And since we've embraced Donovan McNabb as our quarterback, I've never booed him once, and I've always cheered him. And I'll never, I'll never. If we're going to win the Super Bowl, the only way to win it is with Big Five. And you, you just got to feel bad for this guy. I mean, time and time again, he's put in situations where he has to take his team down from 21 points. Same thing yesterday, same thing in the NFC Championship, same thing in the Super Bowl in 2004. The shit just never ends, man. It's like, you know, I did see some things that I liked. Yeah, we stayed competitive. But, you know, now, uh, now Westbrook is done for the season, so... John Ammo is still calling for an 11 and 5 record, 10 and 6 at the worst. I think we're only going to lose a game or two more this season. 
We're obviously going to go on our second half run that we always go on, but we're never going to win the big game if Andy Reid keeps calling, calling the plays, man. We, we're just not going to do it. Unless we have a sizable four-touchdown lead going into a game, I'm just really disappointed because, once again, uh, congratulations to, if there's any Charger fans out there. I don't really think there is any, but if there is any Charger fans out there, congratulations. You guys deserve to win, unlike the Cowboys. Um, you, but, again, the Eagles outplayed them. They, out, they outplayed the Cowboys. I think they outplayed the Saints until they fucked up, and if Donovan McNabb was there, that would, that would have been anybody's ball game. So, not that depressed. I'm thinking we're going to win about four or five in a row now, so let's go Eagles. Now, I got to move on to this. I'm probably about the five-minute mark. Again, I still haven't fixed this timer. I fixed the delay, though. So, dude, I was watching this uh, New England Patriot um, – Indianapolis Colt game, and I got to admit something to you guys out there that I've never really admitted. Over the years, especially the last two years, I've actually developed a respect for Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. I like these two guys. They win. They don't care what anybody else thinks. They cheat. Fuck it. Who cares? Just win. Just win, man. If Andy Reid could, you know, just pull a little bit of Bill Bel Bill Belichickness, we'd have a Super Bowl. But this guy. Did anybody, I mean, you guys, did you guys see that Indianapolis Colts-New England Patriot game? First of all, the Patriots absolutely dominated the Colts. They lost by a point. They dominated them through the whole game. They had a 17-point lead at the beginning of the fourth quarter. It was unbelievable. These guys have the ball at, at, at the Colts' 28-yard line. At the Colts' 28-yard line. So in other words, if they turn the ball over, the Colts only have 28 yards to go the other way. It's fourth down. They have a six-point lead. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I thought, he, I thought it was a joke. Against the, in, the, the undefeated Indianapolis Colts, this guy goes for it on fourth down. And not only does he go for it, but he goes for it to his, his, his second string running back on fourth down. It was the worst call I've ever seen in football history. That was worse than, worse than any one of Andy Reid's calls combined. How do you possibly go for the ball? How do you how do you go for it on fourth and two with a six point lead with two minutes left on on the other side of the field? Not even the Patriots twenty eight, where if they didn't get it, they'd still have to go, you know, 30, 40 yards, seventy yards. I'm sorry, this was on the twenty eight yard line of the Patriots. The worst call I've ever seen. I feel bad for Tom Brady because much like Andy Reid cost Donovan McNabb the game yesterday against the Chargers, Bill Belichick cost Tom Brady the game against the Colts. Bill, uh, Tom Brady owns Peyton Manning. I saw 15 uh, analysts on, NFL, on the NFL Network, supposed experts, and 12 out of the 15, 12 and a half, because one of them split, don't ask me, picked in, 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 that they'd rather have uh, Tom Brady than Peyton Manning. I'm sorry, Peyton Manning than Tom Brady in a, in a game-winning situation. Obviously, they haven't been watching the last 10 years. Tom Brady owns that guy, and he should have won the game last night, and I feel bad for him, even though it has nothing to do with the Eagles. Lastly, I wanted to t touch base on this Kyle Orton, uh, Jake Plummer thing, man. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Jay Cutler. I don't know why I always do that, but Jay Cutler, if you guys go back to my video, I made a video last year, and I said this could end up the worst trade in the history of, 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 of trades. I said back then, go pull up my videos whenever that trade was made, that Kyle Orton will be, probably turn out to be every bit as good as uh, Jay Cutler, and all the uh, Chicago Bears did was give away a first round pick, a third round pick, a fifth round pick, a first round pick for next year, and Kyle Orton for Jay Cutler, man. So. It's one of those Eli Manning type trades. Like if you have the number three overall pick and you're going to trade up to the number one spot for Eli Manning like the Giants did, he better deliver a Super Bowl. In Eli Manning's case, he did. Uh, I think the Jay, the Jay Cutler trade was one of the biggest busts of all time. But uh, I don't know where my t I am on the timer, so I got to roll out of here, folks. John Amell from the archives. I'll be back later in the week to give you my preview for the upcoming game against the, the Bears.